Okay, in this video we're going to look at the Barry Mars image and we're going to try and extract his email, including his email password from the image. We're going to use a program called Autopsy, which is essentially built on top of SleuthKit. Uh, Autopsy is free to download, it's equivalent to FTK, but it's got uh, far fewer features. But it's got most of the features we're going to need for this particular case, looking at this Thunder Thunderbird content. So it starts out asking us about the case. Well, the case is about Barry Miles, so we're going to create a case for Barry Miles. If this is a real case, I'd also put in my case number and examiner details. It then asks me to locate the image. Well, the image is on my secure drive. All of your forensic images should be kept on an encrypted hard disk. Remember, these forensic images contain personal information, and the person may not have committed a crime, so you're under, under a duty to protect their information. So if I have a look under forensic images, we've got Barry Miles, and there's an image. There's just a standard raw image. If your image file doesn't list up, you can change the file type down here to show everything. Um, Autops only lists a few of the file extensions as raw images, but it will accept any file extension as long as the image is in raw format. So select that image, press next. Then we get the option to select some of the modules which Autopsy will use to process the image and extract any extra additional information we can find inside of it. You've got information about the recent activity. We've got a hash lookup. The hash lookup is for, remember I talked in the lecture about using the NSRL database to eliminate known good files from the image and essentially reduce the amount of uh, files you've got to look at. You can use that for this. We've got an EXIF image pass of passing the metadata from images, a keyword and common types of things you'd like to search for throughout the image that it will extract and process, and of course a Thunderbird email parser. I've turned most of the slower ones of these off because, of, because for the purposes of getting through the video quickly. So let's press next and process the image. Now Autopsy has loaded up the image already and we can browse through the image up here. But you'll notice down at the right hand side it's still running those modules to process through the image and extract some information. So if we look at email messages for example, there's currently nothing there. But as soon as these activities finish, the email messages will start to appear. So on this case there's a couple of unallocated bits of space. If there's space around the partition and then we've got a main NTFS partition on here which we can browse. Well, let's have a look at Barry's email messages then. So they're going to be under his users folder, under his username, not Larry, sorry, uh, Barry. And then his application data is in the app data directory. Thunderbird keeps under the roaming directory. We've then got Thunderbird profiles for each of his email accounts. He's got one email account. And in here are all the Thunderbird configuration files for this particular email account. And in one of the folders will be his email messages. It's normally in mail or IMAP mail. And there will be a folder in here. So if we look at this one, this is his email account. And in here are all the files which represent the individual folders in his Thunderbird mailbox. And they, all of these files are in the MBOX mail format, which essentially means that the messages are just concatenated together. So in this, ca in this case, it's the inbox. It's just all of the messages, one after the other, and that's separated by these from line indicating the date and time which the message was received or sent. Uh, also at the top we've got the Mozilla status dictating whether the message has been forwarded, read, received, etc. etc. So there's quite a few messages in here. We can browse through them and see what they contain. If there's any uh, attachments we can select them and base64 decode them to extract the contents of the messages, etc. etc. Now, the thing we're really interested in at the moment is getting Barry's email password. Well, Thunderbird, along with quite a few applications, use SQLite databases, the standard SQL databases. But SQLite is sort of a, uh, a library, if you like, that gets included with programs. It makes it very easy for software developers to store data in these sort of compact files. Now in the case of Thunderbird, for this particular user, there's several SQLite Lite databases but with add-ons he's using, some other different things about preferences, etc., etc. The one we're really interested in, if I sort by name, is signons.sqlite. Now we need some way to view these SQLite databases. So what I'm going to do is extract this entire folder from the image so we can actually examine it. So extract directory, and I'm going to put it on my secure drive again in the Barry Miles directory. So I'm going to place it in there. Directory extracted. And if I go onto my image, secure drive, forensic images, Barry Miles, 
there's his profile directory and there's that Scion, Scion's SQLite database that we want to look at. So the question is how do we view this? Well in the class, in the lecture, we use the command line SQLite tool. There's also a graphical SQLite -like data, uh, tool which will just show you the database table contents. So we're going to use the SQLite database browser and have a look at it. So we're just going to go and open that Scion's SQLite database. Secure drive, forensic images. Barry Miles, choose the directory, and there's our sign ons SQLite. So these are all the tables inside the database. These are the main ones. We've got two about deleted and disabled uh, mail accounts, and then we've got our primary one here called the Moz logons. Moz standing for Mozilla, which is sort of the old name for the Firefox and Thunderbird suite. And then a load of columns detailing information about each of the accounts used. So let's have a look at the actual contents of this table. If we click on Browse Data, we can see there are two accounts configured for Barry Miles' account. Two entries in the table. If we scroll along, there's an encrypted username and password. Now, because Thunderbird requires the username and password, so it needs to know what they are to be able to go and fetch the email account. Although they're encrypted, the encryption key for the part username and password is also stored on the hard disk so that Thunderbird can retrieve it. Now in this case it's stored on the hard disk in this keys key3.db and this is an old Mozilla database format and in there you'll find the encryption key to decrypt these uh, encrypted password and username. Now they're encrypted with the triple DES algorithm. Now rather than go through the database and try and find the encryption key and extract the username, although it's relatively simple to do this in Python as Python's got a cryptography library that makes much of this easy, we're going to use a tool called the Thunderbird password decryptor. If we download it off the internet and extract it, there's a portable version with just a standard exe file that we can use. And then we're going to select the directory in which Barry Miles' profile is in. Forensic images, Barry Miles, there's his profile. That's it, start recovery. There's the two accounts. If I hit show password, there's his, his user username and password for his different email accounts on Thunderbird. So let's have a quick go back and look at Autopsy then, now that we found his password. Autopsy now has finished doing most of the module, so with a bit of luck, it's finished processing the email messages now. If we look at the email messages, yeah, it's found one account, the default account, and if we look in it, there's all of Barry's email messages from the inbox file, which we looked at earlier. Notice Autopsy doesn't seem to give you information about the read and sent messages, but you can look at that from looking at the raw information from the message. There's enough here to be able to sort of browse through the messages and read it. Okay, and that's it. That's how you extract messages and passwords from Thunderbird.